Hello everyone and welcome back to Control Rig Episode 2. Unfortunately it's been a long time since Episode 1 and the main reason for that is that uh, the Control Rig's full body IK was broken in version 5.0. Now I don't know if this has been fully fixed yet in 5.1 but I say I want to move on and show you some other stuff anyway. I gave up waiting. Um, so we're going to try go ahead with this next episode. So in this episode, we're going to go through the IK nodes, talk about how they work, how you set them up, and what do the options mean on them. And so by the end of this video, you should know the difference between each one and when you want to use each one. So let's get started. Okay, so um, moving on to a slightly different topic than we last were here. Uh, we're going to go through the IK nodes. So we're going to go through and create a new control rig for our mannequin over here. So we right click on this one, create new control rig. And there it is. And we open it up. Okay, so this is the mannequin. And as you can see, we've got our settings that we've gone through last time we were here in episode one. If you haven't watched episode one yet, go check it out first. As we do cover some of the core basics of what you're seeing here. So the first thing we want to do in here is find our forward solve execution here. And we're going to create a new control for our hands. And we get, so we're going to go to my rig hierarchy here. I'm just going to minimize the rig here and create a new control. And I'm going to rename this control here the uh, hand L control. And I want to put this into a position of the hand here. So I'm just going to move it around. And by clicking on it over here, let's actually minimize this again. Okay, this is going to get annoying. There we go. Okay, so I want to move this to roughly where the hand is. So move it up here. And just make it a bit bigger so you guys can see it a bit clearer. Okay, so let's move it roughly to where the hand is, like so. Let's actually hide all these bones for now. So we can not ride back that. There we go. So once you've got roughly where you want it to go, if you right click on it, you can see down here you've got set offset transform from closest bone. And when you click on this, basically it's going to lock itself down to that bone coordinate there, which is a handy way of doing it as a shortcut. I'll show a different method in part one. You, you can do either way. There's multiple ways of doing this. Um, so by all means, use this one if you want. Um, so if I move this around and want to reset this with compile or control G to reset all the deformations, it will reset back to that point there. Okay, so how do we actually use the IK node? So there's three I want to go through. And if I just right click in here and type in IK, you got these three. You've got basic fabric, basic IK, and CCD IK. I'm going to go through those three different nodes here. I'm going to start with the basic IK. And talk about how this works. So the basic IK takes two bones, item A and item B. Or it can be anything really, but normally it's two bones. And so we're going to choose the upper arm here for our control. So we're going to do the upper arm. And we'll, that's the right arm. I've just realized I put it hand. No, that's, that's the left arm. That's the right. Going mad here. Upper arm left. And item B is going to be the lower arm. Now, basic IK works with just two bones. That's its thing. It does two bones only. And you give it the effector, which would be the hand in this case. That would be hand L. And there we go. It'll snap to that. So it just moves those two bones only. So nothing else is affected by anything else. It's just those two bones there. And imagine it's like a triangle. Okay, so it's drawing a line from the upper arm down to the lower arm. So you've got this little triangle, this line coming from one to the other. And then it's going to the pole vector. The pole vector is the third point of the triangle, and that indicates which way the triangle sort of orientated around, if you can imagine that. And the pole vector is down here, but we'll come to that in a moment. First of all, let's add the effector in. So we've got this effector here, this controller, and we want to add that into there. So at the moment, the effector is the hand L, which works fine when you want to move it around and stuff, but um hand l is kind of locked down down here so what we can do is going to affect it with the transform uh but we should drag from our control get control and just drag the transform into the effector and there you go now going back to that pole vector i was talking about the third point in our triangle the third point by default is zero zero one 
which gives us a value which is like down this way a little bit. Okay, so it goes down around about here. Which is not great. You know, obviously his arm is bending in a weird way. If I move this around, it kind of doesn't look okay. So we're going to go to the pole vector and get that from our control here. We're going to make it use the control and make it relative to that. So what we're going to do is first of all change the pole vector to use a location rather than a direction. So that's that one. And you could use another control point if you want to do this. You totally can do that. Uh, but I'm just going to use the one they've got current here because we don't want to make it too busy. Keep it quite simple. So take this transform pin and do absolute. To make an absolute pin. And this one will be the parent node because we'll make it relative to that one there. So we'll take that pin there. And we'll take translation of this and put that into the pole vector. Okay. The local is what we're going to do as an offset from that point. Okay. And I want it to go back out. Okay, so out a little bit. So I'm going to go to translation and we want to move it in the Y by looks of it by 30. And if you want, by the way, to see a debug visual where this is, if you go to any of these pins here, like pole vector, we can right click on it and go add visual debug and add a little square point here. So you can see that's the point it's aiming towards. So the elbow basically is pointing towards that point there. Um, so imagine a, a triangle going from the upper arm bone down to lower arm, but then down, down, down to here. Okay, and that's how it determines the bend. Um, yeah, you just readjust this however you want. So I'll make it go a bit in the X as well. Negative 30 there. And that should look a lot better. Okay, so still not perfect yet because we've still got a shoulder issue going on over here. So the shoulder issue is something that's determined based upon what mesh you're looking at. So in the mannequin, the UE5 mannequin at least, uh, we need to fix the secondary axis of the bone. So the secondary axis determines which way the bone is going to determine which, which way it should bend. So secondary axis at the moment has a default value of 1 in the Y, which basically makes it look like it's upside down. So if I compile this, it looks like it's back to front, upside down. So if I change the Y here to negative 1, it will flip it the right way around. And now when I move it around, Get a much better look out of this. Okay. Much better. Okay. But as you see, it's only two bones. So if I pull it extra hard, it's not going to affect anything else, just that bit. Okay. So it does have some limitations to it. So let's take a look at the other ones. We've got fabric is next. So fabric stands for forward and backwards, reverse inverse kinematics. Okay, so forward and backwards, reverse in uh, inverse kinematics. And this takes in a number of items. So this talks about a chain of bones and how they can move in terms of the IK. So here we have to give a whole set of bones here. So to get the set of bones, we're going to go to our root bone here. And I want it to affect everything from the spine all the way down to the arm. So I'm going to go to spine 01, select all the spine bones, then hold down control. Click clavicle L, upper arm L, lower arm L, and then hand L. So all of those connected like so. So we've got the full chain going along. Then I drag this out and drop it in and create item array. I can now plug that item array into the items there. So it's a really nice short way to adding loads of items to our fabric IK here. So I'm now going to plug this into our forward solve instead of the basic IK. So let's just bring that down here. And by default, it's going to look weird because the effect transform by default is zero, zero, zero. So it's going towards the floor. We want to use this point instead. So we just take the transform from our control pin and put it into a basic AFK. Now you can see what this does. If I were to pull this around, you can see it's affecting all of those bones as such. Now, the way fabric works is if I show you all the bones, this makes a bit more sense. So and there's a lot to look at here, but just focus on this chain going from the hand all the way up, down, and around to the spine. As I pull this hand away, you'll notice it affects this bone first, and then it goes this bone, then this bone, this bone, this bone, and then this bone, this bone, this bone. So it does a chain. So if I pull it away, you see this bone's moving, and now this bone's moving, and then as it gets further and further away, they all start to move. Okay, so it's like a chain event of when things move around and stuff. So let's push this out forwards like so. 
as if you're going to reach for a door. Okay, so fabric in this particular animation wouldn't make much sense because it's making your character do weird things like this. Um, which, you know, maybe what you want, I don't know, but it kind of looks a bit odd. But, yeah, there you go. So, that's fabric, okay? And you've got a few things that you need to make sure you're aware of. So, propagate to children. If you don't tick this, basically, it's only going to do that one bone joint. You want it to affect all of the children of it, like the hand and fingers. So, tick that button. It should be on by default anyway. And away it goes. Um, set it back to transform. So, what that does is if I pull this too far away, it stretches the bone out massively, yeah? And that's because the effect to transform has been set and manipulated like so. If I turn this off, it will snap the bone back and won't stretch the bone there. So you can use that in that regard. So it's pretty useful. Um, but yeah, let's go back to this pose here. Now we want to look at the other IK node, which is CCDIK. And this stands for, and I'll hover over so I can remember this one, Cyclic Coordinate Diverse Inverse Kinematics. So basically, it's like fabric, works very similarly. It just handles the mathematics a little bit differently, um, which you'll see quite evidently in a second. So put that into execute here, use the same items list, and we'll use the same effector. So no, no changes, just changing the node, basically. And now you can see how this one reacts differently. And you can really see it's a little bit better. Like our character's not leaning to one side, for example. Our character's standing there and looking pretty normal. Okay. Now, the way CCDIK works is basically all of the bones are moving all at the same time. They don't move well, like, like a chain down the chain. They all move fluidly at the same time, yeah, just by different weighting on each one. And I feel this one is quite nice. It gives you a much nicer look and feel and look a bit more natural. Um, be aware you can overstretch it. There is no effect to transform you can turn off for this one. I don't know why, just there isn't. Um, at least not to my knowledge. Uh, so you can break it quite easily. But which one you use depends heavily on what kind of animation you're trying to do. And also the setup for your uh, character mesh that you're using. Um, each character mesh is going to be slightly different. So do play about with numbers, especially when dealing things with like the pole vectors and the axes here. If you want to mess about with those, do be aware of that. Um, but for IK purposes, um, play about with it to get whatever works best for your actual animation. Uh, so if we're doing like a door handle thing for here, for him, CCDIK seems to be the best option. And I could aim this point over here to a door handle and turn it and, and other things like that. Okay. So yeah, there you go. There are the three basic um, IK nodes that you are, should be aware of. And there you go, we've got our IK nodes covered. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about the aim direction nodes and talk about how we can aim our character at different objects in the world and also objects on themselves, controls on themselves. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. If you like my content, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot and it does um, help boost the algorithm and get us more into people's uh, inboxes. So thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.